In this video, let's look at configuration control through the PROC directory in the syscontrol.conf configuration file. The PROC directory documents parameters loaded with the kernel. It's a virtual directory created only when a system loads. Let's take a look at this directory. All these numbers on the left-hand side are associated with currently running processes. The files on the right-hand side, at least most of them, at this level, are related to your hardware. There are a number of interesting files in this directory. We'll take a look at a few. The CPU info file list detected CPUs. There are two on my system as I'm running a dual core CPU. If I had a RAID device on this system, I'd find it in the MD stat file. But I don't, so there's nothing there. Modules are listed in the modules file. If you've ever run the ls mod command before, this all should look familiar. But as you can see, you have a bit more. These are memory locations associated with each module. The mounts file lists mounted volumes. It's quite similar to the output from the mount command. The swaps file list configured an active swap space. As you can see, I have two swap partitions or swap volumes, one configured on a logical volume, a second configured on a dedicated partition. There are a number of interesting settings deep in PROC directories. For example, if you're configuring the system as a router, you want to enable IP packet forwarding. You can do so in this file way deep into in the PROC directory. To see if IP packet forwarding is enabled, let's check out the contents of that file. Zero means it's disabled. To enable it, the easiest way is to put a one in that file. This is the quickest way to perform that task. Now IP packet forwarding is enabled on this system, and you can now use it as a router. And this is just a sample of what you can do. You can make sure this configuration keeps after you reboot your system in the syscontrol.conf file. These options look a little complex, but they're commented in the file. For example, if you want to make sure this system is set up as a router, or at least forward packets as a router the next time you boot it, you would change this from 0 to 1. Source route verification. This is something that can help prevent IP address spoofing. It's enabled by default in Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and it makes sure that messages you get are actually from the location they say they are. So if you get a message from an IP address that looks like it's in Arizona, this makes sure that the message isn't coming from someplace else, say Iraq. TCP send cookies. That sounds weird, but it has nothing to do with snacks. It protects against packet flooding, sometimes known as a denial-of-service attack. One iteration of this was the so-called ping attack from several years back. Since this is enabled by default, at least this type of denial-of-service attack doesn't work on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Thank you, and on to the next video.